Greetings, isn't it about time we had a look at this display on the 505? There are some lines missing. This is even worse when it's cold and damp in this northern hemisphere town. Uh, before uh, we take it apart, I'm going to check all the buttons and the switches are okay. I think I've had this apart a few years ago and did replace the switches. I'm also going to check the keyboard pads too. Some of them are just on occasion double triggering. If you're in any doubt, then I recommend replacing them too. If we're going to take this apart, let's just do it the once and get it right. So uh, remove the screws at the side there, one each side, and the screws on the back too. Ideally put the machine on something soft to support it to save damage in any of the controls. I'm going to need to remove all those sockets. Uh, the socket nuts at the back there and the screws holding the MIDI connectors and the memory card holder. We'll need to remove all those to get the first board out. And uh, we'll need to take those cables out too. You lift up the little tabs of the white plastic uh, there and carefully remove those cables. They're not too delicate and when you put them back in, be very careful you don't bend any of the... Uh, the parts that will uh, be inserted, you, you'll see the end of the cable there. And just, yeah, maybe you could do with a screwdriver there just to uh, release that bit of plastic. A gentle persuasion. So, uh, yeah, just check that you insert those correctly when uh, you reassemble your working unit. That's the cable there for the uh, the LCD that we're going to replace. Uh, just give that a little persuasion too. So remove all the cables on that board. And there's three screws holding that in too. Put all your screws in a safe place and don't lose them. Even put them on a bit of paper with some tape and mark where they all go. Okay after removing that final cable there's the board removed and uh, my chaos of screws. Please don't do that. We can see the LCD module there now. Okay now very carefully we need to remove that um, Perspex uh, display cover there. As you can see I've got a knife just in at the side. It's just stuck on with tape. Be very careful. It shouldn't shatter, but uh, we will prise that off. And we can gain access to the screws on the display. OK, that's the cover off. Next we're going to take off the four screws holding the display in, just like that. Now I know there is the iron trick um, that you may be aware of uh, fixing this, but it's temporary. Um, at best, um, it's not a permanent solution and uh, putting a new display in uh, is really your recommended option. Okay, this is the listing from uh, where I purchased the display and uh, these are the pictures from the listing and I recommend you get in uh, something with the similar spec to this. Look how affordable it is. This is what came through the post. I would like to add that this is quite an advanced, slightly ambitious project because it does require some work in to the case to fit this in. We're going to cover that later. Now, of course, we need to know how we're going to connect that to the 505. Fortunately, there's a lot of uh, service manuals online now. had a little trouble getting my head around this, but if we look at the LCD module, it looks like 5 volts is going to pin 14. Is that pin 14 on the 505 and there's ground on pin 1 and then they all go to the LCD module which is on the left there and it's got uh, the inputs um, written down what they are and we can put this and try and match it against the spec sheet for the new display and uh, they pretty much add up um, they, they set this 16 pins on the new display and they are for power for the backlight 
Okay, I took some time out of my busy day and drew up this little diagram. Now, I'm not going to talk through it because I just get myself in lots, but it's so self-explanatory how these are joined together. I hope you'll agree. The 5050 board, 505 board on the left and the new display on the right with jumpers uh, for the ground connection to the ground connection on the backlight and you can use a 1 to 10k resistor to connect to the positive side of the backlight. You can experiment with that, there's very little in it but a 1 to 10k resistor, I've actually gone with a 1k and it's fine, I've, I've left it on for a couple of hours and uh, nothing bad has happened. Now if you have a look at the ribbon cable connector for the uh, old display you'll see that it's numbered 1 to 14 there and um, that just uh, reads kind of sequentially across so that just reads se se sequentially across all those uh, the pin numbers from 1 to 14 okay this is the cable you'll need it's a 14 way cable you can get larger and just trim it down to size. I probably would have been better getting slightly smaller diameter uh, pitch uh, for this, however. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tin the ends of each of these 14 strands. This is the correct way to do it, so the solder will flow. Okay, next up, let's get this cable attached. Starting from one end, solder every other cable to the pin on one side. I hope you can make that out there in the video. That's every other cable to every other pin on one side. It's just a lot easier to do that. There's a bit of a close-up of... Uh, what I finished, I'm not going to win any awards for that. Um, now there's one millimetre solder, that's too thick really, although I did use that, that and I, there's an even finer solder next to it, that's too fine. Uh, maybe um, half a mil would be ideal to do this. Okay, that's the board soldered with the uh, jumper wire and the resistor to connect to the backlight. The fact that I've soldered this board already, you'll just want to put your uh, brand new board in here to uh, check how it's going to fit. Uh, they're probably a generic make these boards so they will all be the same dimensions and I've used a permanent marker there to mark where I need to cut to fit this board in. This is where it gets a little ambitious. Um, two of the screw holes uh, do mount up. You can see I've got a screw in the right hand side there and I'm going to reuse those holes. And I've put the uh, Perspex cover on just to check that's going to look good if I do go with uh, that positioning. Now I do have to add that putting that display on top of the metal casing is actually sitting about a millimetre proud and... Uh, that perspex doesn't uh, sit snugly anymore, so uh, I will be putting that display underneath the the uh, metal case. Now, one method to uh, start gnawing away at this case is uh, I managed to, with with a few to and fro's, managed to uh, remove these tabbed bits of the casing. A few more to and throwing should do it. Now it's never too soon to gather yourself together some tools if you want to get into DIY fixing and tinkering with stuff. So I get a nice coarse file and we can finish off the metal edge there as much as we need to. One file is never enough so here's a nice coarse round file which did quite a good job of uh, removing that little indentation there. Well, like I say, it's a bit ambitious, so I had to bring out the big boys, and here's a kind of budget Dremel-style tool. 
which helped me cut off the final pieces. It's just going to be a bit quicker than a file, but uh, yeah, like I say, a little ambitious there. But uh, I managed to get all that stuff cut away. Now, as I said earlier, I had to put this uh, display uh, behind the metal casing and uh, drill additional holes there. More tools required, of course. Just get the right size drill bit for the screws that you're using. Ideally, use the screws that came out. They're pretty small. Uh, don't put this in until you've tested it, of course, and make sure that it's oriented correctly. But there's the screws back in. And just make sure you've cut away enough there to uh, make sure there's no shorts from any of that circuit board. This will hopefully last quite a few, quite a few years and uh, is better quality than that last display. Ideally clean off the old sticky stuff and put some new double-sided tape on. Okay, that's it just about done, but I did say I was going to replace the switches for the keyboard pads. So, remove the four screws from the power supply, remove that connector cable, and that one. I know this is quite a lot more work, and we'll remove all the screws uh, from that main PCB as well. There's quite a few. Put them in a safe place, of course. Uh, we'll need to remove the cutlass screws for the power connector there just to gain access to at least one of the screws on that main board and we can take that off. And these are the uh, switches that are just given the occasional re-trigger. Just remember to remove the slider caps there and there's also a nut and washer for the main uh, value dial. Now it's quite easy to remove the uh, keyboard um, switch covers, just with those little tabs there. Now they look about 8mm square switches. Uh, with about 5mm height, this is approximately, give or take, a few micrometers. Now, as luck would have it, I had a rummage and found these. I think I've had this board apart before, like I said, a couple of years ago, and must have purchased these. And um, although I couldn't find any on my usual auction site, I did find these. I checked the data sheet, and they are fine for this 505, if you want to go ahead and order them. Okay, so once they were soldered in, just put a few couple of screws back in on that on that board and uh, flip it over. I just want to you to check that all these buttons are still operating. Sometimes they won't get seated correctly, so uh, only put a few screws in it until they're all, uh, you've checked them all that they're seated correctly. Okay, so fast forward um, an unspecified number of hours and it's all back together. Just the reverse procedure, of course, of taking it apart. It's looking good with that blue display and the red and green buttons and obviously it's uh, clear to read and use it as a, uh, an instrument now and a very good instrument it is too. Well I think that's about it. I've covered uh, um, pretty much everything there, uh, particularly uh, how to connect uh, the new display to the old one. So. Uh, good luck with that, guys. Uh, please get your broken uh, 505 up and running again and either use it or sell it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.